Hey folks, Landstrider here. I'm doing some more Atom Smasher today, and I got a special guest with me today. Whisperfire came over. Hello, everyone. So she wanted to uh, get, I promised her a uh, blaze rod, and then while she's here, uh, we made sure that she, she was on the whitelist for the turret so she would be able to come down in the base. So that's awesome. She's able to, she's able to trespass. <laughs> And uh, the other thing that we wanted to do while she was here was we uh, decided that it would be a good time to uh, to restructure to restructure the uh, the generator downstairs. So I tore out all the blocks and rebuilt the whole thing from the ground up so Whisper could see exactly how it goes, and also so you guys could see exactly how the blocks went in. So here we go. Let's cut to that footage right about now. All right. So this is only like this is not everything but this will work and in fact if you make a five by five like five by five by five internally this will work perfectly yeah right because then you wouldn't necessarily have to have the extra layer but i'm going to be putting an extra layer on and of course if you have the five by five by five internally it will actually hold be able to do just a little bit higher tier fuel because you will have even higher cooling but when you put that extra middle layer that i'm using for the seventh for the seven layer system it it really only does work ideally for the lowest tier fuel because otherwise you you're gonna have a heat issue but if you made this five by five internally um, and you come up you want to start in the center with with a copper oops one too, one too many copper and then of course yeah that's gonna get a glowstone right because that's gonna be surrounded by Brilliant blocks because glowstone requires it be touching at least two brilliant blocks for it to work and they have to be active and to be active uh, a moderator has to be touching a reactor cell but each one of these is going to be touching two reactor cells and when a reactor cell is in between two or when a moderator is in between two reactor cells it actually acts as though those reactor cells are touching so when when two reactor cells touch it increases efficiency and increases heat you know like you put things to you put the the, the the fissionable material closer it you know it fissions faster and makes more heat is I guess the kind of theory now everywhere you can you want to have a glowstone I mean yeah sorry lapis cooler and cool lapis cooler must touch a reactor cell and it must touch the reactor casing for it to work. So there we go, we put them there. Um, the next one that we can put in is magnesium. Magnesium must touch a active moderator and the reactor casing. So they can go there. Right? And then we can go right there and right there. One right there and one right there because right because it's touching an active moderator and it's touching the reactor casing gotcha now ev again everywhere that we can on this layer we want to put lapis 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 and lapis Lap lapis and lapis now this actually if you did just let's see one two three layers inside internally you could put lapis here right because if it was only three tall that would be touching the, the casing on the bottom right okay that that's another that's another very legitimate um very good in fact uh reactor that would be able to handle some high tier fuel because it wouldn't be overly over wouldn't over be reducing heat now if we come and look in here right now we can see that our current stats are 1920 rf um, that wouldn't change right for the fuel that we're using now this is the lowest tier fuel that we can possibly have in it right now so that can only go up depending on the fuel that you use there's a lot of different types of fuel that but each of the higher tier fuels is going to produce more heat so but we you can see that even just with the configuration we got we're already at negative 9 930 imagine having another layer of lapis magnesium and magnesium on the bottom side of that of that ring 
that's going to produce even you know a lot more cooling so I would be able to afford to put a much higher tier fuel in without having to worry about heat if I only nice. had a three tall but we're not we're, we got we got bigger than that we got big plans um, so now I want to do again beryllium 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 and beryllium right because we're gonna do uh, we, we want to get that maximum cooling right or we want to get that maximum heat maximum efficiency that's what the beryllium does increases heat and efficiency uh, and because I got a glowstone right there I can use copper copper just has to touch an active glowstone cooler it doesn't care about anything else as long as the act the the, the glowstone cooler is active it works that's that's gonna get rid of our light for now Let's, uh, let's put another one there just so we have light for now. And that's actually going to be one. Well, we're going to have one there and there and there and there. Because remember, glowstone just needs to be touching two, two beryllium blocks. And now these ones are actually going to be touching three right now. So there's no problem with that. Which also means that we can do copper, 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 and copper right there. Now here's where we're going to put another layer of fuel rods against the beryllium. Now remember there's another fuel rod on the other side of that beryllium so those are like they're touching but there's a beryllium in between. You can put more than one beryllium in between but the, only the ones that are touching the cell count as active. Now even if there was like like say say I had like a whole line of beryllium here right and then I put a cell here. This this cell still counts as touching the cell that's at the other end of the beryllium, right? But only the beryllium that is t physically touching the cell counts as active. That one in the middle doesn't count as active, but it still transmits the ne the neutrons or or whatever 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 you want to use in your imagination. <laughs> So there's another thing that you can, you know, another way that you can kind of tweak the, the things. Um, another way that you can really get a bunch out of a reactor like this is instead of doing just one layer of beryllium between these cells and the next is to do a two layer of beryllium and then put your, your other cells all the way around, right? Because that both of those beryllium would actually be counted as active. And, you know, I could get even more glowstone in that way more glowstone coolers that, in that way. Okay, more glowstone coolers that way. If I, yeah, if I was gonna do that, but that's not what I'm actually, that's not what I'm doing in this one. Uh, at least not right now. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we're gonna put the other glowstone right there, right? And then these beryllium's are gonna go here to make these cells all act touch. So basically each one of these cells thinks it's touching three other cells. Right? Mm hmm Currently. Now when we go to put the a next layer in, the center layer of cells is actually gonna think that it's touching four other cells. But I am not I don't have the materials to do that right now. Now if you're gonna do a five by five by five internally, you would end up putting your lapis right here, right? Because this would be you know, those would be touching the bottom layer of, of reactor casing. That's not what we're doing. We got a seven tall. So, but what we do, where we do want, is to have our magnesium. Remember, magnesium has to touch the beryllium blocks. So we can put a layer of magnesium coolers all the way around, like so. Then we can put some there, and there, and there, and back. there. Welcome back. And then, of course, we can put our copper cell right on top of that. And let's, let's, hold, let's hold off on that. I'll put it there at the last minute because <laughs> that's our light source for now. These, the glowstone coolers are nice because they actually do light up the inside of the reactor. Um, now, the other thing is, is we need to put the next layer of lapis in. That's there, 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 the, oop. right there, there, there. Uh, are you recording? Yes, we are. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. We're just doing a little uh, reconstruction of the inside of the 
the um, the reactor so I could show Whisper the the exact pattern of the way that I've built this one. Again, this yeah. is only one out of like millions of ways to do this, so don't think that this is the right way. It's just a way. I don't. He's wanna... teaching me something. Yeah, I don't want to. Now, eventually, I'm going to get some more beryllium. Go around another, you know, some more another layer. Put another layer of reactor cells in. Put a whole bunch more lapis cells in. Put a whole bunch more magnesium cells in. A couple more glowstone, and two more, and a couple more copper. I'm not even sure exactly how much of that stuff I have. Let me come up here and check. I might even be able to do it now. I don't know if I have the... Because we... Yeah, oh yeah, we got a bunch of lapis. So this would be a great time for me to actually see if I can do this. Um, do I have enough steel and tough alloy though? That's probably the thing. I don't probably have the tough alloy ready to go, but... If I look in here, I have lithium, and do I have the ferroboron? It doesn't look like it, so I probably got to do ferroboron, which is steel. We we out of steel? I thought you made a bunch of steel. Did did you make it? Not like cook it or no? Or did you use it all right away? He's ignoring me now. Oh, there it is. There it is. There's the steel. Okay. Cool, cool. Okay. Did you see so, something to me? Yeah, I said, where's the steel? <laughs> I found it, though. Uh, it was cooking. Yeah. I found it. Um, and do we have boron anywhere ready to go? That is magnesium. What is this down here? Aluminum. Uh, maybe I have some boron over here. Yeah, there we go. Boron over there. Um, there we go. Toss that in there. We'll make boron. Um, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go over to Destiny. I gotta get ready for tonight. No, yeah, no problem. We'll catch you later. I'm gonna stay here and talk to you guys. Ain't nobody on. Oh, I thought you were like going to another channel when you said that. No, 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 no. I'm just gonna go to a different game. Okay. We need this to go faster. So let me pull the augments out of there and toss it in there. There we go. Now we're cooking. All right, let me see how many actual, do I have any ready to go? Doesn't look like it. All right, well we can go down and put our, our beryllium in. So I have the beryllium here. One, two, three, four. And the cells will go there, 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 and there. And the other glowstone that I have will go right there. One of the glowstones I have. I need um, four more glowstone. I'm going to need uh, 12 more lapis and how many more magnesium? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, no, yeah, let's see, 8 up here, 12, 8, 12 magnesium, or 12, no, even more magnesium than that. <laughs> Even more magnesium than that. I'm gonna, need, I'm gonna need a lot of magnesium ones. I should, okay, so I should have another. I need another copper. I'm gonna need some more copper ones too, aren't I? Yeah. Do I have enough copper made up right now? Yeah, plenty of copper. Just waiting on the tough alloy. Oop. And we're out of power, so I'm gonna have to turn the reactor on for a few minutes. Use the manual switch for that. And you can see, if you come down right now and look, we are at 8,000 RF a tick with the current configuration, but we are at 1,920 heat positive, so we're building up heat. If I let it run for too long, it would actually overheat and start melting down. 
but I can I can let it run for a little bit, get some power, and then shut it off and let it cool off. And then if I just give it a little more, kick it back on for a little bit. But yeah, we're currently at 8,000 RF, um, and that is at 555% efficiency. We're definitely going to get higher than that when we get it all done. But I got to make a whole bunch more empty coolers in order to fill them with the various materials that it's going to take to finish it up. Now hopefully this is about done. It is good. And now I can swap that over and toss in a stack of lithium dust. Get a whole stack here. Because I need a bunch of... Tough alloy is, is very good stuff. You can make really good armor out of it. And I'm actually thinking about switching the uh, nano armor to uh, be an upgrade of tough alloy. Like you make tough alloy and then you upgrade it with a few things to get the nano armor. Plus, it also is black armor, so it would kind of fit that. It'd be the upgrade. It'd be the thing that you would upgrade to do the nano armor. Yeah. Now we just gotta wait. In fact, hopefully we still still got a bunch of steel someplace um, because if we look at coolers, the empty cooler takes steel and tough alloy to give you four uh, four of each gives you two coolers so let's uh, wait till we get about 16 here and that should give me enough to at least progress a little bit if I have 16 tough and 16 what would that give me 16 coolers oops wrong thing now I did try to use the active coolers once, but it didn't uh, didn't didn't work out very well for me. So I'm not sure if I was if it was the uh, you know the fact that I was just trying to use water. Maybe that's not the best to use. We're gonna need, I know we're gonna need a bunch of magnesium, so let's just pull the magnesium out. I know we're gonna need, gonna need at least eight magnesium, so we might as well just go ahead and make those since that's what we got to do. Got enough of. And go down and put those in. Because we can put magnesium there, magnesium there, 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 and there. Okay. And of course, we are going to have these here. That's the last of the the beryllium. That's the very last of the beryllium. Now the very so now I need what do I need five copper I need five copper and what is it four glowstone no five five and wait is there one in the middle here yeah there's already one there Does, that glowstone is there but I need four glowstone for these little empty spots in the middle of the beryllium blocks on the sides so that's four glowstones one copper actually no five copper because I can put them on the outside of the glowstone as well. So, four glowstone, five copper. That's my next, the next thing I need to create. So let's grab some more tough alloy. I think I already got all the steel that we have made up. <laughs> the Dornell's gonna be mad because uh, he just made a full stack of steel, and he's gonna come back and it's gonna be like no steel again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so that gives me eight more. So I need glowstone. I have a bunch of that. Glowstone coolers. I need one, two, three. I need eight total blocks of glowstone to make four coolers. I think. I did say four glowstone, I believe. Yes, you did. And then eight or five copper, but I don't have enough yet. In fact, I'm out of steel. Is that what I'm out of? Yes, I'm out of steel. So I might need to throw some stuff in for 
deal. Is that actually factory blocks? Let's clear my inventory a little bit here. Just a, just a touch. Uh, so that I can grab about 16 or so coal, throw those into the enrichment chamber, then Yeah, do you, do you you know how to make steel, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna throw we're gonna throw another full stack of iron in there. Does it have anything in there right now? No, it does not. All right, let's push let's push that over, and we'll just have to remember to try to try to remember to get that going. Uh, but I'm gonna go down and place in what I have a magnesium cooler. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm holding off on that one until I can put. Where did I leave that one out at? Over here. Ah, right there. Thank you. So glowstone there, glowstone there, there, and the center of this side. There it is. Okay. Looking pretty good. Oh yeah, did I have the copper ones? So I went to make them and then I got distracted by lack of steel. Okay, did I put them in the grid here somewhere? No, there's me. There, there they go. So grab some copper. I still need one more after this. What Y level can you find copper? Uh, just about any Y level. About 40 or 50 is the most abundant. 40 is... Optimal, P-T-I-O-M-L, optimal, yeah, he'll know what I mean. I'm sure that's not spelled correctly. All right, so copper in the very center bottom, right? And then copper on the face of each one of these glowstones along the sides. Now it's going to get dark in here in a second because I'm covering up all of the glowstone. Now there's one more I need copper right there. And then... I need eight, no, 16 lapis and eight more magnesium. Yeah, eight more magnesium and 16 lapis and one more copper. Oh, goodness. It's a lot of materials. It's a lot of materials, but should be well worth it when we're done. Okay, so I'm done with the glowstone. Um, just waiting on steel, I think. Yeah. Ugh, which has to run through this thing twice. I really wish I had the upgrades, the speed upgrades in this right now. Anything, anything else we can talk about while we're waiting for steel to process? Well, I was thinking about getting the power so that I can make a digital miner. So I was looking at how you gated mechanism and was wondering why mechanism wasn't in the quest book yet. Um, it is. It is. You get uh, you get to the metallurgic infuser for the final quest in the technology. Um, but as far as like beyond that, uh, at that point you're kind of like once you get to mechanism. He pretty much opens the door to everything else in the pack. So, Sweet. so again, the I, I I I just in fact I just had uh, a comment on YouTube about this. Oh, we're out of power. Uh, I just had a comment on YouTube about this um, about uh, you know the specifics of the pack and stuff. And one of the things I want I I made sure I, I mentioned is the fact that the quest book is not a win condition. It's a guide. Um, if you want to say, if you want to have, if you want to call anything a win condition for the pack, it's once you have a space station and you've visited other planets and you know you've explored a number of other places, then you can say you want. <laughs> like, like if you've been to like every planet in the solar system and you know planted your flag or whatever, you know that's your win condition. Completing the quest book is is definitely not it. It is strictly a guide and a way to stimulate a player player or uh, or 
to have an economy, whether it be in single player or multiplayer. Um, you know, the, that, that whole quest line that I added with the coins and stuff like that. So, but yeah, the, the quest book is definitely not a win condition. Like a lot of quest packs, they, you know, you, you finish through the quest books, you know, you've done everything in the pack. Now that's, that's not going to be the way this one is. Cause I would have to, I would have to have about a hundred more quests in order to really get you through everything that's in the pack. And a lot of those quests, a lot of the things that are in the pack, they're really hard to make quests for, especially when you're talking like open computers. Um, you know, I mean, I could tell you to make this and that and the other, but you know, it's not going to help you learn to use it because, you know, just making the item like, you know, you make a, com you make an open computer computer, it, you know, having it doesn't, doesn't, you know, doesn't mean you're done. You've, you still got to like power it and program it. And it doesn't really come with any programming. You have to, you know, kind of figure that out using the wikis and stuff like that. So, so yeah, try not to look at it as a quest book as a win condition. Um, Cause, it, cause yeah, it's not. It, it's it's just a guide to get you through to, you know, like, hey, this is how you get to, uh, this is how you unlock all the possibilities. And I then, have actually set a personal win condition of reaching the earth. Cool, cool. I mean, that's a great one. That's a great one. Especially if you get there and then you, uh, you know, establish yourself there. Cause that's not going to be easy. Because if you get to Earth, that is, in fact, going to have a lot of nasty stuff that you're going to have to clear out. A bunch of abandoned buildings and things like that. And mm -hmm. uh, some really tough, really, I mean, you think the mobs around here are tough. Wait till you get to a haunted building. <laughs> All right, let's go see how our steel is progressing there. I powered up the reactor long enough to get a full charge. So we should be going again. Oh, about half a stack. And then it's got to process again. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I really wanted, I really, I really need to like stress that yeah, the quest book is not the win condition for the pack. I know, I know a lot of quest packs. You can play like that. You can play them like that. Particularly things like, like right now I'm playing Forever Stranded Lost Souls. It has a ton of quests, and yeah, once you get through all those quests, you've probably touched on just about everything in the pack. I mean, he put something in for just about everything. Um, I don't plan on doing that. You know, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of things that, you know, either can't really, you know, detect via the quest book or whatever, or, you know, it's just really up to you because it's really just an optional thing. I, I didn't want to force people to do open computers if they don't have any desire to program, but it's there for people who, who like to do that stuff. And it is an extremely, extremely powerful tool if you know what you're doing with it. Um, I don't even really know what I'm doing with it that well. Just enough to be dangerous, but I can do some things with it. It's pretty neat. Uh, there's nanotech from open computers that you can actually program your nanobots to perform uh, potion uh, effects on you and things like that. Uh, there's dro uh, drones that you can program to go out and uh, cut trees for you or defend your area you know or kill specific mobs or mine a specific area or one of my favorite things to do with drones and robots is have them build new bases for you so that's something you can do with that um, and then when you get into RF tools there's just a crazy amount of things you can do with the builder and um, you know, copying areas and querying out areas and like, uh, just, it's just a number of things. So there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, future episodes that are just not going to have anything to do with the quest book. It's just, okay, we're going to look at this today. We're going to look at that today. And it'll be more about me putting things together off camera and then just trying to explain to you how I did it and how it works and stuff like that. And maybe we'll tear it down and put it back together. Uh, like we're doing right now with the reactor, which is the perfect example. Um, so yeah, we're doing the uh, the rebuild on the reactor here to try and really kind of get an idea of how this thing is working. So and how I put it together. Now, like I said, and again, this is not one of those. There's no right or wrong way to do it. This is just one way. This is how just how I decided to do mine. 
I hope to see um, other YouTubers and other people, um, even if they're not YouTubers, you know, post post something f and send me a tweet. Or uh, you know, if you're on my Discord, you know, post post an image of you know how you put your rack together. I'm really curious. You know, see what people do because you can get like really really big reactors too. And I mean, there's active cooling. There's you can build inside the reactor. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. And especially when you start talking about using some of the high tier fuels, I think you can get real crazy. Still just a processing iron here, or into steel. And do I have enough tough ally to get? Yeah, there we go. I got a ton of tough ally. Let that go too. Yeah, here's another thing that I don't have in the quest book. Xnet. Xnet allows you to transmit power items and fluid across the same cable network. Um, and you can hide it. It's the only uh, cabling system that we have that you can facade. Now right now I'm having an issue with the current facade that I was trying to use because it doesn't like the uh, connected texture factory box, so I'm trying to decide on on another thing to to, to uh, facade it with. I'm actually thinking maybe a block of iron. Let me try that. In fact, let me try that. If I put a block of iron down, just just something random here while we're waiting for steel to process. And I grab my facades here. Let's see if this works. So facade is now mimicking a block of iron. Then let me go up outside. And we're going to go over here to this corner where I've been trying to, to do stuff in the seat. Yeah, it actually does work. That works. I mean, it doesn't look as good as the factory block, I suppose. But at least it, it does work. Can I, I can't facade the connector? Is that is that a thing? Maybe I need to hold shift. Ah. Maybe. And you see how that looks? That's actually a cable running up through that that and it's not really not really steel. Yeah. Oh, oh there we go, there we go. I got it. Facaded it. That doesn't look bad. No, it doesn't. That doesn't look bad. It's be it's better than now, like I said, when I was trying to do the uh, the factory block, I think it's because it's a connected texture and the facade didn't handle that it just turned it into an invisible block <laughs> so but that's that'll that'll work that will work and then i am actually going to plan i plan on put another one over here on this corner of this building like right here it's going to be another turret base and these are strictly to uh kill any mobs that may show up on the in the area i have to make sure that i don't i have to make sure that i wait uh say only mobs and not passive animals or anything like that and not players because I don't really want I don't I don't want people to get shot just for going past the base you know I don't, I don't have a problem with them crossing my island I just have a problem if they come down in my room it's my room <laughs> okay let's uh, swap this over and then we can start getting some more steel in here in a few seconds we should be able to finish up um, and I totally forgot how many I still need. <laughs> Write this down for me here. <laughs> Was you counting up the total blocks? I, I I totally don't know exactly how many we have of each. I was actually going to count it in post production. Ah, okay, cool, cool. So yeah, we we'll have to look. You have to look forward to uh, whispers um, uh, when she puts her react together. If she copies this, I'm 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 thinking she might at least for her first one. I think I will, yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, maybe after that, when you get a little adventurous, you can start thinking of other designs. So I still need eight more magnesium. Uh, eight more magnesium and 12 more. Is that it? No, wait, there was one more here. And a copper. And a copper. There's copper goes right there. Um, and 12 more lapis. Okay. So 8, 12, and 1. I think that's right. Does that, does that sound right? 
Does that look yes, right? Yes, it does. Me? Okay. Yes, it does. Eight, twelve, and one. Right. Now that we're starting to get some steel out of there, toss it up here into the electric furnace. That's a little faster than the other furnace. I probably should remove these uh, iron furnaces. They're nice though. They are nice to keep around. Because e e even when we don't, uh, even if we don't want to turn the reactor on, they still work. <laughs> the interesting thing is, oh, uh, here's here's something here's something that's kind of cool. You might find interesting. Uh, so right now the reactor is at a positive heat, right? Like it would generate a bunch of heat. Let's uh, let's let's crank it up a little bit here. Get it on for just a little bit, and it's generating some heat. You look in there, and you can see that we're, we're, our heat's rising. So we, if we turn it off, it'll cool off, right? Now you can run a reactor at a positive heat as long as you're not running it all the time. So if I set my uh, redstone control here to 50%, and I say whenever it's less than 50%, turn on. What it's going to do is it's it's only going to turn on for a little bit, and it has plenty of time in between the times that it's on to cool off, even at that really high heat level. Even at that really high heat level, I can actually run it right there, like that. I wouldn't have to put any more cooling in it. So that is how this reactor can use a higher tier fuel without melting down. Because as long as you don't have a very high demand for energy, it'll have more than enough time to cycle and cool off in between its run run periods. So I thought that, I, I figured I, I should mention that. That is a very legitimate way to run a, run a reactor. You don't have to have a negative heat value. You can have a positive heat value and still have it be perfectly serviceable. And right there, you know, as you can see, this is running the, re the base now, right now, just without without the with the very high positive heat value. All right, let's go see if we got some some more steel ready to go, and I think we should be able to throw some more cooling in there now. Let's move these over, grab this steel out of there, and we should be able to. Oh, I keep opening. One of these has got a not a recipe in it, right? Here we go. <laughs> and I keep clicking the active cooler. That's not the one I want. There we go. No, let me put that there. And that these facades look like almost exactly the same as the empty coolers. That's hilarious. I am gonna get those confused if I don't get them out of my inventory. Okay, so I needed one more copper, and I left the copper in here just for that. We'll grab that one first. Put the rest of the copper away. Grab more steel. Get it, and I might as well get an even number here. Let's see, 11, one more. There we go, 12. That should allow me to create nine total. What I say? I need eight magnesium and twelve lapis. Uh, one copper. Oh, don't tell me I'm out of magnesium ingots too. I did make the copper one. I got that one in my inventory. Uh, shoot! I need to process magnesium. Uh, where's the pink stuff? There it is. Toss that in the macerator. Now, I don't know if you've seen this. A mas our macerator is set up to auto eject right into our washing plant. Speaking of, need to pull these out temporarily because I want it to process the magnesium all the way through. And we can just put that stuff away for the time being. I'll come back to that. Throw these in there. So yeah, it will it will run right through to the thermal centrifuge, which will uh, you know output all that stuff. Now the only other thing I really probably could do, and maybe do in the future, is um, set it up so that it pulls out the tiny piles of dust, sends it into a uh, auto crafter um, from RF Tools, you know, because I can put a whole bunch of if I get a tier three, I can put like nine recipes in it, 
so that it could do all the different mini dusts and turn them into the regular dust and then send that back out to a furnace and cook it send it into the, the things there's a lot more automation that needs to be done here these are just kind of this is kind of our manual wall of machines that we got going on right now and eventually we're gonna have a lot more automation but I need the most magnesium I can get out of this although theoretically this might be the, all the magnesium I ever need if I never make another reactor but uh, I'm not so sure that I won't I'm not so sure that I won't I might have a I might have a second one especially when you start getting your mechanism machines up and uh, if you start wanting to run a uh, uh, what is it or orbital laser drill those could take a lot of power. I actually don't know how much power those take because I never got that far in any any pack yet. Do you, have you now? Have you done an orbital laser drill from Advanced Rock um, I had the option to, but I didn't actually explore it because it wasn't in the quest book. Ah. This was for the original Forever Stranded. Right. Yeah, I, I remember that's what the series that you said you had done that in, and I checked a little bit of that out. Yeah, I didn't get too far in the original Forever Stranded because I, I started with uh, my friend Twitchy and uh, we recorded like a couple sessions. I did eventually upload the original session in a in a in a in a series of uh, twenty minute clips, but uh, yeah, we never really got very far in it because for reasons. <laughs> ah, this is gonna take a little bit. Magnesium, hurry up. I really need to make some uh, overclockers for these. You should try at least one session in Forever Stranded Hurt Edition. Yeah, and that's that, harsh. That that was one of the complaints that I had with the original Forever Stranded. It was it was enough like it was enough like Crash Landing to make me disappointed that it wasn't enough like Crash Landing. Actually, its original title was Crash Landing Forever, but the mod pack maker of Crash Landing protested, so the name was changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iskander is, uh, he's, he's a character. He is definitely a character. He's uh, very possessive. Because uh, I originally wanted to make a Crash Landing 2 as well, but uh, he wouldn't have it. <laughs> wouldn't have none of that now I I did actually get I am actually part of the uh, development of the original crash landing I mean well, some people may not you may not know that um, the whole reason that ender IO got added to crash landing the original one is because of me oh I did not know and I did provide those scripts so yeah so I did have a little bit I did have my fingers in the pie just a little bit <laughs> There is, in fact, there is a, there is a, um, I have a copy of the 1. Dot, I think it's 1.1.4 version of Crash Landing that was never released. And it has some quests and some stuff in it that was never available to the public. I'm just waiting on steel. And magnesium. In fact, uh, that was one of the things I wanted to do when we when we did Forever Stranded. Is I wanted to like go back and reload that old map because there's a whole un un unreleased section of the map that's a big base that me and Shane and um, the rest of the Crash crew put together that was going to be released with the pack, but never did because that update never. He never finished that update. We were, we were, I was always kind of sad about it, but I do have that map. I do have that map. Yeah, me, me, uh, Shane, uh, Lord Raccoon, and uh, Funshine X, and um, oh gosh, I can't even think of her name right now. The the girl that that uh, that was with that crew. But oh, I wish I could think of her name. Dang it, because she was a really good she was a really good video maker, but she was only around for like a really brief time and then she never made any more YouTube. It was kinda sad. Everybody asked me about her from time to time. 
maybe I'll remember here in a bit. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's an unreleased map uh, area for crash landing. If you ever want to take a look at it, let me know. <laughs> okay, cool. But that's gone. That's a way. That's going way back, and that kind of breaks my "don't go backwards" rule. <laughs> All right, is that enough steel to get the rest of what I need here? That is a question. Okay, so I got, that would be the eight magnesium and then I need eight and 12 is 20. Okay, there we go, exactly. I'm gonna have one left over, but I knew that that was gonna happen. Cool, cool. All right, now we just need to wait on the magnesium to get processed. Let's cook it someplace. Done with the steel. And what did I do with the rest of that magnesium I had a little minute ago? Oh, I probably ended up shifting it back into the system. Yeah, there it is. Okay, eight. Well, of course, I need a full stack. I need a full stack because I gotta surround a. I gotta surround each one of the empty coolers with a magnesium ingot in order to get a magnesium cooler. So, stone in there. Seven more. Do I have a bunch of little tiny piles of magnesium over here by any chance? Nope, nope, just like a couple. At least these are nice quiet machines. <laughs> have you They're pretty loud. What did you think of the uh, the the loudness of the the metal press and stuff from Tech Guns the first time you used it? Did it, did it surprise you? It was, it was impressive. I uh, found out during the uh, the test server that we had set up. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, and I, I recommend that you make here. Actually, I got some extra ones over here. Let's see here. These are amazing. <laughs> Ooh, soundproofing. I didn't know these blocks existed. Yep, yep. They will pretty much deaden the sound in a 6x6x6 six by six by six radius. So you definitely need one over at your place because I noticed your generator is always like pulsing in your videos. But it's okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you, uh, how did the peat fire generator go? Did, uh, did, did you eventually let your lava run out and then check how much, how well it kept the power up, or are you still throwing? Not yet. Okay. I was actually going to make additional peat fire generators and see about switching over. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious about how well they, they do. I mean, it's supposed to do like I think 120 RF a tick, which is really quite good. Um, and it, would, it makes sense that it would be that good too, because it, it is kind of a, of a bit of a process. So you can't. There's only a little bit of automation that you can do with that, uh, particularly with the creation of the what is it, the bio stuff or or whatever, where you gotta use the carbon catalyst. There's there's no real way to automate that in this pack. Mhm. Mm uh, let's see, just about there, just about there. Keep on cooking the magnesium. We're very close. Um, I guess while I'm waiting for that last magnesium to cook, I can go ahead and grab out all of the lapis we're going to need because I need 12 of those. Oh, that's right. It's a full grid's worth to get the blocks. There's seven. So 12 means I need 24 blocks of lapis. Oof, yeah, this is going to burn up a lot of our lapis supply here. One, two, three. Well, the nice thing about this is it only takes two blocks on either side of the coolers to give us the 12 we need. There we go. Right. 
and then oh, just a couple more magnesium and then we're good so close actually that's not burned anymore so I'm gonna throw it in the electric furnace now no point in wasting that la another piece of fuel there is <laughs> It. Yeah, these these machines here don't really make any noise. The ore washer or the thermal centrifuge. I'm not sure if they're supposed to or not. I mean, plus we've got one actually behind the metal press, so it could just be the fact that they're in range of that one. It's like in the wall behind the metal press, kind of hidden. Because it doesn't exactly have very nice texture. So close. Three, I need two more. Get two more. Oh, are we gonna have enough? Barely. Barely. Processed all that I had, and we're gonna just barely have enough. Two more. There we go. 64 total. Yes. And uh, where'd I leave those? Right there. Eight more magnesium blocks. Alright. Oh, here, uh, oop, what I throw at you? No, you don't want that. You want that. <laughs> Trade you. Yay. You can take that home. Yay. I don't think they're that expensive to make anyway, so. Alrighty, let's put the last bits in. So, first of all, this one's going to make it dark in here, but got to put it in. Copper. Magnesium there. Magnesium there there and there and then lapis 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 okay and then this is gonna this is gonna keep us from getting back in here so gotta do it on the way out lapis and I'm gonna do it over here lapis 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 and lapis why do I still have magnesium? You forgot to put it in between the lapis. Ah, thank you. Oops. That could be why. Magnesium, lapis, lapis. Magnesium, lapis. Lapis, lapis. Magnesium and lapis. There we go. It's all in. Now, big question is, did I actually end up with a... Yes. A negative heat number. Yes. That's sweet. That is very sweet. And again, this is ideal for the initial low tier fuel. It's ideal. And look at the amount of power that we're going to be generating. 9,760 per tick. RF. Let's crank this up and keep it up at 90%. And it should just run. Should just run nice and smooth now. Don't gotta do anything else. Wow, cool. Thank you for showing me this. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad you can I was glad you were able to come over and uh, check it out while we while we restructured it and showed the audience exactly how it is built. So anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. Till next time, I will. Catch you later. Bye.